shoulder arthritis. The question again, which of the following patients would benefit most from a glenohumeral arthrodesis? 74-year-old man with AVN and proximal humerus, no. 24-year-old woman with recurrent instability after arthroscopic procedure for multi-directional instability. These patients, when they get a fusion, one out of four will still complain of instability. Imagine that, you live an x-ray, the bones are one bone, they're completely fused, and one out of four are gonna say, yeah, but my shoulder still feels unstable. So try not to do that operation. 30-year-old labor with paralysis of the deltoid and rotator cuffs, that sounds a little closer to what we're looking for. 70-year-old with removal of infected primary total shoulder arthroplasty, that guy's gonna mostly end up probably with antibiotics, and then once his shoulder is sterilized, a reverse. And then a 20-year-old man with cranial, uh, cleidocranial dysostosis. Um, that was just thrown in there to really confuse you, I think. Um, so it's a 30-year-old with the paralysis. I mentioned to you before, probably the ideal patient, Robin Richards up in Canada reported this, is those traumatic events like a motorcycle accident where they tear off the roots. So C4 through C6 or C7 is not so good, uh, but the lower part is working so they have good hand function, but their shoulder is just unfunctional and uh, they have some elbow uh, activity uh, and the hand is working. And so those are the best glenohumeral joint fusion candidates. So paralysis of deltoid and rotator cuff would be an indication. And that's to provide us. So what most people do what you see here in this picture is that we align it the way that we want to. Um, there are a couple of different ways to do this. The traditional is 30, 30, 30, 30 of elevation, 30 of internal rotation, and 30 degrees of abduction, which kind of puts it in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but that's what that was initially described. I think a lot of other people have kind of brought this down just a little bit, about 20 degrees, and maybe 10 to 20 degrees of flexion, and a little bit more internal rotation so you can use it to your head and to the front of your body. So you have to be careful about that. And then we fix it with these large screws. We typically use cannulated screws um, over seven millimeters in diameter to hold it, and then we drop a plate over the top that hold it in place. And the bone graft can come from iliac crest, after we've scraped off all the cartilage. And I'm sure most of you have never done or seen these operations. Um, uh, fortunately, I, the, I did most of these in the early part of my career, and now we have a lot better options available for treating these patients, uh, except for those neurologic injuries. Uh, stabilization of paralytic disorders. Uh, so again, with the traumatic events, uh, the brachial plexus palsy, it has to be a dense, uh, you know, non-functioning one, salvage after failed total shoulder arthroplasty. Uh, the treatment now is going to be a reverse. I mean, we bone graft the glenoid side, we bone graft the humeral side, and if all else fails, then you may end up with a hemiarthroplasty in that failed situation. But what happens is after you've done a total shoulder, if it fails and you take everything out, there's such a huge gap of bone, it's very, very, very difficult to get it to fuse. So that's a really rare indication. I think I just stick with what I mentioned before uh, with regards to the neurologic problems. Contraindications, um, you know, if they have no scapulothoracic motion, so if the patient has a condition where their scapula doesn't move, they'll have no use of their arm at all. What is the role of the shoulder? It's to position the hand in space. If you have no scapulothoracic music movement, no glenohumeral movement, you can't position the hand in space. So that's devastating. So you have to keep an eye on, on that condition. And then um, in terms of, uh, <clears throat> again, this is just uh, the comments here. A lot of people will fuse it in an upward position uh, up against the acromion. I think most of us now will try to keep it in the glenohumeral joint because that keeps the arm length in a good position. We clean out all that. We put those screws across and drop a plate, and usually it fuse fairly readily in the majority of our patients. And then here's just the radiographs as you see here. And then the EMG, of course, to test to see exactly what's going on and make sure that the hand is working well. Uh, the approach. Uh, boy, this is a, I think you're pretty, pretty rare that you're going to have to do these uh, procedures, but uh, the approach is kind of a, an extended approach to come over the top. And then you see here the fusion position, the classic is 30, 30, 30. And again, most people will drop it down just a little bit, about 20 degrees of abduction, 20 degrees of forward flexion. And the internal rotation, uh, if you have a labor or someone that really needs it with good strength, slightly more than 30 degrees of internal rotation will give them a little bit better function. And uh, we use the pelvic recon plate over the top. We use the screws across the glenohumeral joint for compression, uh, and that has worked as a pretty reliable operation. And then we put them in a brace like a handshake orthosis for six weeks, uh, and most patients will go on to fuse.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.